going to talk all today about different ways to um, help students in the transition process. Um, but the part we're going to start with first is student-centered planning. So any way that you can include students in, the tr in their transition process. So I want you guys to think about when you were in high school, would you have liked everyone, all your teachers, your parents, to just tell you what you had to do? What classes you had to take, what you had to do when you graduated, where you had to live? No. Uh, I want you to look at this image though. This little sliver here, 12% of students who have IEPs in transition go to their IEP meetings and take part in their IEPs. It's really low. Yeah. So we do have a big group of people who are attending, but they are providing very little information in those during those meetings. So we're going to talk today about ways to engage those students in the process and help them actually develop their IEPs, not just sit through the transition meeting. So here are some ways to get them involved in developing the IEP itself. So we can obviously, we do all these assessments on students. Instead of just looking at the assessments and developing the IEP, let's sit down with them and really talk through like what they struggled with on the assessments, what their interests are, and figure out how we can make goals based on that for them. Um, have them self-monitor and evaluate their progress. We already do a great job with our da uh, data binders and graphing those results, but all of our students have devices. so. We could use those to have them make graphs on Google Docs, um, kind of like they used to do at parents teacher conferences, and they can bring those to the IEP meetings and share that information. Um, it also really helps motivate them and hold them accountable. And then to determine their own accommodations and modifications. As we know, as the students get older, they often refuse accommodations and modifications, uh, and it would definitely be really important for them to just have a conversation and figure out what works best for each kid. Now we really need to talk about how we're going to involve the parents more because that's another problem we had at this school that we targeted. So um, you can turn and talk these two questions. Let's look at the first one together. What types of challenges does our school face in regards to parent involvement? What parents? Yeah. <laughs> Transportation is always a big Transportation part. work schedule. Mm -hmm. I mean, just to have parents able to work. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're at work, so they can't really provide a lot of those support options. And with them actually knowing that they do have the option of having it over the phone, many of them just choose that, even when they do have transportation. Right. It's easiest to just call yeah. on, their, on their hour and lunch. Mm -hmm. It's easy for them just to do it on the phone uh -huh. and not be present. Uh -huh. Okay, nice. Mm -hmm. So now we're going to take that and think about how those challenges that you guys just mentioned, transportation, um, availability, how do those impact our students now? Like the fact that their parents aren't available or aren't present at those meetings, how is this gonna affect their post-secondary goals for after graduation? Because if they don't even understand the IEP goals and they're not supporting them with their IEP goals, then that's gonna impact their post-secondary goals because that's all, you know, a lot of the purpose of a transition plan right. to prepare them for post-secondary. Mm -hmm. right. So the big idea about this is the fact that if their parents aren't involved, they're less likely to succeed in their post-secondary goals, which they're supposed to be making themselves, right? Mm -hmm. With the help of their parents. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's kind of brought me to these four um, options because we need to increase parent involvement. So I figured maybe one day we could host a parent day. So like how um, we do back to school nights, maybe we could reach out to different parents for our students that are on your caseload and see if they, uh, when they're available, we would try to pick maybe one day, have them all come in start building that relationship, start meet, uh, asking what their child's needs are maybe. Because I feel like if we can build a relationship early, they're more likely to maybe show up to those IEP meetings or those transition meetings. Invite parents to school events. So just getting them more involved, involve parents in the IEP meeting. So just helping them feel more welcome, not just that they're there to check mark a box off, right? Because mm -hmm. legally they have to be there. Really get them involved so they feel like their opinion is valued. And then uh, last but not least, connecting parents with mentor parents. I thought this could be a good idea because I know I have met some really great parents that are very involved in their when Students become more involved in their IEP. Their self-determination decreases. I hit the wrong line. One example of a role that you can assign a student in the IEP meeting is... Treasure. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I wish there was <laughs> Parent involvement in the 
transition plan is important. The last question of these options, what is the most effective way to involve parents in the transition process? Although there are many schools that provide an ample amount of support through the student's educational program, a transition plan is used to provide those opportunities for support in the um, aging out stages, which are typically from like the senior year of high school into their education outside of what the typical IEP would provide. So these supports should be introduced and explored in the years leading up to a student's transition in order to provide the best outcomes for students to actually utilize all that can be offered to them. So that's when you would look into the community, you would look into different situations that they can use, they can search, for maybe jobs they might be interested in, volunteer opportunities, and things like that. So in order to provide those opportunities to our students, how can we connect? So there's many different ways that you can use strategies and agencies to incorporate into your students' learning that will definitely benefit them in the future. So before we started this, we didn't know much about any of agencies that could provide supports to our students. So we found four really cool ones that we wanted to take a minute to talk about. So the first one is called The Whole Person. So it provides services to people with disabilities and their families uh, strive to help them identify and implement resources. So their goal through their entire program is to get people who have disabilities back home or back into their communities where they can support themselves and what they can do on their own. The second one, which is what Kayla already mentioned, is Elam Christian Services. So they provide a huge plethora of support starting when a child with a disability is at three and it goes all the way until the age of 22. So specifically focusing on transitions, services include adult transition programs such as vocational training, life skills training, community life integration, social skills and self-advocacy lessons, sensory integration and more. So we focused on Elam in one of our projects and they explained to us how they take the people who they are transitioning and they take them into the community and they work on finding specific jobs and they implement and give them all the tools they need so that they can be successful in the end. So another service that specifically supports our district is the Bremen Youth Services. So this agency offers support to families that need additional financial support as well as career and college focus and they work with not only the student but they work with the family too. Bremen Youth Services offers special recreational counseling, a step program, parent groups, treatment programs, summer programs, individual and family counseling, and they do groups for social skills, parents, parenting, grandparents, raising grandchildren, and substance abuse. And the last one we found that we thought was most beneficial to our district was Metropolitan Family Services. They offer services such as counseling and legal aid for adults and children. They value family and community, so their strengths are their ability to grow and be resilient to change. They also do staff professionalism, ethical service delivery programs that reflect compassion for people is a key motivator for this particular service. And now that we have covered students being a part of their transition services, we've covered families being a part of their transition services, now and also community agencies. What do we do with that information? How do we know when to implement certain parts? How do we know which activities, which services will best benefit our students? So since this is an introductory lesson, we are going to do a quick activity. We're going to give some scenarios that go along with each student and we're going to decide based on their current situations, based on their demographics, based on their goals, based on their IEP, what services can we utilize that would best support them in the classroom? So now that we had a minute to talk or to look at the IEP goals and different activities that you might use while working with these goals, what are some of the strategies or activities or things that you thought might be beneficial to the student when working through their transition plan? meeting with adult workers in the field of sports related. Good. So setting up those different meetings and having different advisors and things that you can work through in direct sports related 
activities, but maybe she should do some research into what careers are available mm -hmm. that have to do with sports. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. I think meeting with a college advisor would also be beneficial to discuss ways she can get involved in college with athletics and different sports related careers there too. Right, perfect, because before she can start her employment, she needs to get through college. She needs to find those advisors and find those jobs that she might be interested in before she can really research the different areas and research the different careers that she could go into. Very good, so those are awesome goals. So some other goals that she might wanna consider would be going over the list with the counselor.